You jump on in. Someone is pinging quite heavily at the start of this. Looks as though they've sorted that out now. But we are in game. Let's get this started. We have to the bottom right hand side of the map. The Pink Protoss player. Give it up for Zest. His opponent to the top left hand side, the red Terran player. I mean, honestly, this could be a GSL final. This could be a BlizzCon final in my eyes. It is Maru to the top left hand side of the map. And maybe Zest hasn't been playing, you know, quite to the level of being a BlizzCon finalist in recent months. But, I mean, just the names that are in the screen. It's like Maru versus Zest. Absolutely crazy, guys. And what a way to kickstart your... Saturday morning night. Where's everyone tuning in from, by the way? That's always a great question, especially when we're casting in such a weird little time zone. Obviously, very uh, early morning for us in Europe, and well, I guess not very early morning, I guess 8 a.m. ish for a lot of Europe. 7 a.m. for me, so it's a bit earlier. Who's up late in America? Who's up in Europe already? Anyone watch watching from the Far East as well? Let me know where you're watching from, guys, as we're tuning in from around the world to watch what very well is going to join. The watch just is going to be. A fantastic StarCraft 2 series. Maru vs. Zest, first map on Echo. So we set up into this, and we're going to be seeing the uh, Cyber Nexus Core begin to build from Zest. Nothing too crazy, just Gate, Nexus, Cyber to begin with. And it's going to be an expansion based build from Maru as well, as he pulls his SCV down to the low ground. And he's going to build up this command center down here. So he's going to pop this down, get this ready to go. And uh, his first Ripper just about halfway done in the meanwhile, of course, get this Ripper across the map and he can go from there. Factory will drop down now as well for Maru as he continues to uh, set up into this. Nothing too crazy then to get us started. We're not going to be seeing any early shenanigans, at least not any super early shenanigans. No proxy factories, no proxy barracks, no proxy Stargate or anything like that. It's just going to be straight up and standard for the first few minutes here. Now we could see a little bit of aggression and one of the main things that Protoss players have really been having trouble with as of late has been the aggression going into the mid stages of the game. The early to, you know, the very early, it's kind of, it's like, not quite early game, like early mid game pushes from the Terran player have been very powerful. You know, yes, the early game pushes are quite powerful too with the Cyclones, etc. But the early mid game pushes with like a couple of Cyclones and Marines or maybe like a couple of tanks when Simpak and Combat Shields finishes, that sort of point when you're thinking about taking a third base or trying to defend a third base for the third time, that's where Pro's players have been struggling. So we'll see if Zamaru is going to build up into something like that. For now, a Widowmine on the way. We're going to be seeing the Starport is just about halfway done as well. Means that he's just looking for a very standard drop here to begin with. A Evis 8 Marine drop, or maybe he goes Widowmine Marine. Maybe just the Widowmines will drop across the map. A lot of it will depend on what he scouts with right now. And as he comes up into the main base with this Reaper. So comes in towards the main base. We're going to see the Robo and the Twilight on the way up. And we're just going to be seeing Maru dropping down a grenade and... Well, I mean, he gets the scouting information, you know, seen the Robo, seen the Twilight, he's found out the tech structures here. And that is one of the most important things for him. Knowing that, well, now he can work forwards from this position and just uh, see where he gets to from this point. Observer comes up straight away in a blink upgrade as well. I mean, this is just straight up standard PVT from Zest. I mean, this has been the go-to for a long time in the matchup. As we see Maru, well, because he sees it's a standard setup, which isn't going to be aggressive early with a Stargate and an Oracle or anything, he's going to send his first Wooden Mine across the map, and then he's probably going to lift up the Marines and the Wooden Mine that that's still back at home, bring those across the map as well, and really just make the most out of this aggression. First Wooden Mine will actually burrow on the third base and try and be a bit of a nuisance there. A little bit later in the game, once then uh, does move towards that. We'll see uh, if it's going to be able to do much, but we're keeping our eyes on this Medivac right now. As it is going to be the one thing that will really push to get damage done in the next few moments. Now, we've been seeing a lot of double forge play in PvT lately from the Protoss players, and I wonder if that's something we're going to see here once again. For now, though, it is all about this aggression. As we just mentioned, now the Medivac has arrived. Pilot behind the mineral line is non existent, so probes have to pull away. And there's nothing here just yet to defend against this. Widowmine on the low ground does get taken down, tries to run, for run forwards into the mineral line and get something done, but the unit's been left there by Zest initially, and now he pulls in towards the main. As you see, Maru just going to lift up with everything. Nothing will fall. A little bit of damage taken here and there, but that's about it. And now he's going to be backing away up the top side. Lots of you guys telling me where you're watching from. Australia, California, Ohio, West Coast. We've got some people from Tokyo, New Zealand, Canada. All right, we got people from around the world right here. As we set up into this uh, PVT. And again, what a PVT it is. Maru versus Zest. Five minutes in. 
And well, nothing ridiculous just yet, as we see. The little mine did drop back off towards the third base, and well, Marines in the middle of the map trying to trade as well. Loses one of them to the Warp Prism, which actually had an Adept inside. And Zest just looking to apply some early pressure. And there is that double forge. As we just mentioned, it's become very popular lately to go double forge. Robot Bay going to cross out very quickly. This has been a setup we've seen a lot of in PvT. It's strong, it's solid, it's very, very powerful. And it just allows you to take a much later third base, but a very safe third base. And it puts you into a position where you can apply so much pressure from that point on. Then we've seen a couple more gates being added on there, and that's going to be taking us up to five in total, which is not really out of the ordinary. I mean, sometimes you even see six gates in total when you see this sort of setup from Zest that we're seeing right now. Want to get Zest gets dropped down, but it will have to be lifted back up. Turret well placed, actually, to push that uh, Warp Prism away and came in at a good time as well. So Warp Prism not able to do much here early, and you can see that Maru is setting up into his, well, his initial upgrades. You know, the stim pack and the combat shields, those upgrades that will allow him to really become a pretty scary force out on the map with these bio forces. Stalkers with Blink, of course, will try and pick up some kills wherever possible. It doesn't happen just yet, though. And also kind of back at home for Maru, which uh, we haven't really been looking at too much, I guess. We, there is a couple of siege tanks up. So he's gone for these two siege tanks early, which are great safety units early on. They can also transition very nicely into a little bit of an aggressive push, as we were mentioning, with the stim pack plus one combat shields all finishing now. He can definitely make a bit of a push out of this. So Maru's going to be going for one of these early mid-game pushes that we mentioned early on as well, where he's going to start moving across the map, looking to apply pressure. And this is why we see a lot of these kind of double forge Colossus builds, because they're very safe. They get you a lot of units early. They really prioritize, you know, they really prioritize getting a good amount of units up so you can defend these sort of pushes. And the double forge is sort of your greed factor as well, so that, you know, even though you're not getting a fast bird nexus or anything, you're still kind of really advancing yourself in this game. You're not just spamming out units. Now, I mean, Echo is actually one of the maps which you can actually probably take a bit of a fast third base on, because it is quite easy to defend on this map because of the very kind of one-dimensional attack pathway in. And Zest will want to try and buy a little bit of time here. will not want to attack in straight away. If he could force the siege up a bit further back, that'd be great, as, well, maybe he does just go for this. He's going to fight in before the tanks are sieged, so it's a little bit of a head start on this one. Widow my two going off as well, but... I mean, the Colossi here are going to be good in the back, and more Stalkers warping in. There goes that tank. Maru, interestingly enough, did not target fire down the Colossi at any point of that with the Siege Tanks, which is oftentimes what Terran players will aim to do. At the same time, a double drop into the back of the Natural Expansion, again pushed away by the Pylon. And it looks as though, well, Zest holds on. He doesn't lose too much. He actually defends pretty nicely as his third base finishes up behind all of this, and you know, there's two Medivacs coming in right down the right-hand side. Some Marines and Marauders unloading. And starting to work their way through this nexus. And we're seeing this uh, drop coming back in towards the main, or trying to get back in towards the main. As we have the two medevacs all to the left hand side, so Mario really just going to look to start multitasking here over the next few moments, and you see a couple more of these uh, units getting picked off as this uh, observer from Zest to Sat. Been a very nice observer this one. Seen pretty much everything going on on the map for his opponent. Just sat here watching as Maru leaves every time with units and so on. And Warpism actually finds the medevacs to the left, so knows they are still here. And right now the army just split up to make sure that neither of these drops are going to be able to get too much done. Both of them starting to saturate their third bases then, and yeah, really looking as though they're just setting up into a really great set, uh, you know, a really great position to move forwards from. Fusion Core just finishes now from Maru as well, and we're going to be seeing plus two, plus two from Zest starting on up as well. So, I mean, continuing with those upgrades, and that really is going to be one of the leads Zest will hold throughout this game now, as well, Maru is starting to join up everything at you. If units coming through the center, these medevacs are actually not going to go to the center, they're going to pass through the center, but they're heading towards the right-hand side to join up with these couple of medevacs over here. So, a bit of a larger drop begin to fart form. As now we see this Liberate just to the left-hand side, what Prism Getting pushed away again. I mean, neither player's really been successful with any of their harassment. And I don't think this drop will do much either. Once again, an observer in location, and Zest will see this coming in. And he's got pylons very well placed to overcharge any amount of axe which try to get in towards his main base. So already you can see that Maru realizes this is probably one of those positions where he's best off just backing away instead. So that's exactly what he does, backs away. And then we've seen a few more of these medivacs continue to come in and just get ready to turn the load overhead on top of the group. Bring these all units all together. 2 2 continue to come in right now from Zest. So continue to set up into this as this Liberator is going to go around the top right hand side of the map. I'm just going to be seeing the 
Again, attempt to be aggressive from both players, but it's just not happening. So we're really going to be heading into a much later stage of this game. And you can see Maru with the advanced ballistics on the way up for the Liberators is going to be able to start kind of getting into this position where he's going to have a very strong mid-game army with a lot of Liberators and that Liberator she utilizes. Well, big warping in the main base. It's kind of the first time we've really seen a player really kind of getting into one of the bases of their opponents and really starting to get damage done. But even then, Maru is so quick to respond. The Liberators coming in there in the main quite quickly. Their CVs pulled away. I can't imagine that Zest killed that many workers there at all. Nine killed throughout the game, so yeah. I don't think he really killed all too much as more Prisma gets away. These pure two stalkers got left behind. So that's going to push the front at the same time. I mean, he could at the very least pick up a fourth command center. If not a little bit more here. Let's find out. The Liberator is, of course, a little bit out of position. All position towards the main right now. And yeah, I think lip range being up is going to make this very difficult realistically for Zest to attack into. But he's going to open up these rocks to the left-hand side towards the third base. Just open up that sort of position and see what's potent, you know, see what is possible over there. Is this Liberator going to siege it from a distance? Now this might be a little bit problematic for Zest. You know, where, you know what does he do? Was Ooh, actually hold that fort because he's starting to keep on fighting over here. He's going to say, what's he going to do to clean that out? But he's actually just going to push on up into the natural expansion. There's a lot of units from Mario over this left-hand side. And well, he's going to have to start pulling these in. Liberators are sieging up. And the Stalker count is starting to decrease. He's blinking on top of the Liberators. Is there enough Stalkers? Well, he gets rid of a couple, but there's still more Liberators here. And Zest is taking such a weird fight overall. It's very hard to say, really, who comes out ahead of this. I think Zest definitely does overall, actually, when you look at what's left over. But, I mean, you've got to consider that there isn't really any stalkers here because you can't really keep on pushing. It's just the fact that he was sudden liberated fire to this right-hand side with Colossi starting to go down. I mean, yes, he cleaned up quite nicely on the ground. He's going to see reinforcing stalkers. Well, that's what he needs. With reinforcing stalkers, he might just have enough to take down those Liberators. He keeps ping-ponging between the two bases. There's only two Liberators, so there's not exactly, you know, not like there's very much to kind of, uh, you know, take up larger positions with us. Here we go, pushing forwards. Another wave of Stalkers coming through, blinking forwards. There's one more Liberator going down, and Mario is on the ropes right here as he pulls back into his natural expansion. But I just think Zest has a little bit too much, and, well, whatever Zest has decided to do in this past week has really been working out for him because he has been playing so well in the last kind of few days. I mean, he took down Bjorn 3-0 in the Void TV Weekly last week, and I mean, it's just been a great week for Zest. He's starting it off, or well, he's continuing to play very well here today as he goes up against Maru. Game 1, I mean, he just picks him apart with this attack across the map. He saw what he wanted to do. He saw the opportunity. Maru has lost his command center now, and I mean, what do you do from here? See Zest just moving back into position over there. Again, the Liberators are going to be the one nuisance here from Zest. He doesn't really have much of an answer to this one Liberator over here is still in a bit annoying position as well. 14 kills on it. And that's probably the one thing that's kind of keeping Maru somewhat in this game. But still, he's lost so many SCVs. There's not really a kind of realistic way he stays in this now. And we're going to see this. So the is just going to escape. But, I mean, so what? You're not even mining from it. You're barely mining at all. His main base isn't mining, so the income is pretty much non-existent for Maru at this point in the game. As we see, well, in fact, he's not mining any minerals at all right now. Just to emphasize that fact. And Zest going to rotate through the center and well a little bit of marine marauder again ready to stem forwards as well some liberators up from the sky sieged up once again but Ma again Zest just does not have any intention of being stopped in this game he's just going to keep on attacking through the liberators are going down that's the last liberator now falling and with that we'll see a GG out of Maru Zest picks up game number one of this best of three and he will be you know for this past week I think he really has turned on something's clicked and he's decided to become Zest again because, well, at least today already, I mean, you can see he looks to be on fire. To the bottom right-hand side, the pink Protoss player is going to be Zest, up by one in this best of three. Let's see if he can make a run that will qualify him to IEM Katowice. To the top left-hand side, we have the red Terran player. Let's see if he can bounce back, representing Jin Air Green Wings. It is the one and only Maru. Who, who has been kind of, you know, killing it, really. I mean, we haven't seen as much of Maru as Zest because we've been able to see Zest in a lot of these online events. He's been playing in Limo Leagues, he's been playing in Body TV Weeklies, for example, Base Train Star League, and all the rest of these online events held on the Korean server. Whereas Maru has not been playing in all of these events. I think the last time we saw Maru was... Well, I guess we saw Maru yesterday in the first stage of this Korean qualifier. But outside of that, we haven't seen him anywhere near as much, and I mean, did we really get to see much of him yesterday? He kind of just stomped through everybody. 
So he was looking very good yesterday. But again, it's definitely not someone we've been seeing too much of. And as we're going to be seeing this uh, first probe, just having a little bit of a look around. Figure out what's going on here in the early stages. Mostly wants to figure out where his opponent is, of course. Know whether this is going to be a close spawn uh, game or cross spawn game. And being cross spawn game is going to make this very interesting. It obviously means that any sort of push is going to take much no, a much longer time to hit. I mean, you know, you look at what Zest just did in game number one there, that attack with the Colossi and so on. You know, that push would you know, hit the middle of the map here on Whirlwind in the time it takes you to get all the way across an Echo. And the same for Maru, like last game he went for a very aggressive tank push. He's not going to do anything near the same right now because he went CC first into these extra barracks. So it's not going to be the same for Maru at all. But it's the same idea, he wouldn't be able to very easily because it would just take him so long to get across the map. And actually, I mean the three bases here on Whirlwind are quite hard to attack into in general because I mean, there's a couple ledges you can use, but you're always attacking up into the high ground, even for the third base, so it's a little bit difficult. The one weakness of the three bases on this map is the droppability of them, I would say. The fact that, you know, to jump between the third to the main is very easy for drops and very difficult for a ground-based army, so the key to this game for Zest has got to be just making sure that he's able to split his army correctly and that he stays on drop top of all of those potential drops. He did a very good job of it in game number one. He had observers spread around the map. I don't think we saw a single time a drop from Maru really catching Zest off guard or anything or really getting too much done. I think the most harassment Maru really got off in that game was that one liberator while Zest was pushing across the map that sieged up his third base gases. I mean, that picked off a lot of units. Uh, well, not a lot of units, but a lot of uh, probes. A few units as well as it tried to warp in. I mean, that was with liberator range as well, so... You know, it's not kind of the same thing. I mean, Zest could have seen that coming and still has troubles dealing with it because he didn't have a Stargate up. So, it's, uh, it's interesting. Now, look at this, though. Zest with a very fast resonating glaives. And I wonder if he's just going to kind of spam out a whole bunch of gateways and just go all in to kind of try and wrap the series up nice and quickly. Just get game two finished up and, you know, complete it here already. As you see, another couple of gates going to come down. So I think that is going to be our answer right there. Five gates in total right here. And of course, potential to add some more down on the low ground as well. There's gateway number six. And Zess is just going to look to adapt his way to victory in game number two to take this first series of the day. And the IEM Katowice Korean server qualifiers, of course. The best thing about this is that we actually start it all over again tomorrow. Tomorrow we have the stage one of qualifier two. And on Monday we have stage two of qualifier two. So... It really is an exciting few days when it comes to online StarCraft action. I mean, today especially. Today is, is stacked when it comes to the online events. This qualifier, followed by Shoutcraft Kings, followed by, well, during Shoutcraft Kings, the IEM EU Stage 2 qualifier is going to be starting. So that's going to be pretty insane as well. Innovation Snoot in the first round. It's going to be really sick. Day of StarCraft 2. If you're a StarCraft fan, like, you better have some, like, caffeine ready to go, because you need to make sure you're going to be awake all day long for this one. Okay, we're going to be seeing the, uh, War Prism coming in towards the upper left-hand side. I mean, this is just a straight-up all-in. I love the fact he's building the second War Prism. You know why? Just because of the fact that, A, if the first Prism gets taken down, this entire attack gets shut down. So having a second Prism allows him to keep going for a while. For B, I mean, actually, if you have a second Prism and the first one isn't dead, send it into the natural and all of a sudden you've got so much to do and well here is Zest you know this may very well have just been a kind of a large response to the fact that he saw it was a CC first and that he saw it's just going to be a lot of kind of you know unupgraded marines for a while here in this game more prism still here ready to warp in again Zest should be ready to warp in right so yeah there we go six uh, more adepts starting to join the fray as second warp prism heads towards the natural SCV's pulled forwards here you see the adepts starting to shade forwards nice little kiting backwards don't think Zest has lost anything just yet. No, he has not. Here we go. Commits on top of this army. Loses one adept so far, but I mean, I think there might just be a numbers advantage for Zest so far. I mean, if nothing else, he is cleaning out a lot of the SCVs. However, Marines of Rose are doing a better job than I thought they would and actually cleaning up a few more of these adepts than I thought they might. I'm never warping in the main, though, and that is the problem. You know, you can see that Mami's production is nowhere near at the same kind of level as Zest. And that's the thing with these big gateway attacks. If you kind of fall behind early, it's very hard to come back. As we see a couple of Cyclones popping, not a bad idea either. You know, them kind of DPS machines. We put out a lot of damage onto the Adepts, but it's just too little and it's just too late. We really needed a better response to this early. He's trying to get rid of this War Prism, but again, there's another one ready to go over to this right-hand side. 
that right there is GG. Zest only takes six minutes to take down Maru in game number two.